Leave the matter. So four questions. You want to get serious with God? You want to arrive at dominion? There are four questions you must ask. Who am I? And every time you ask, who am I? The only person who can answer is the one who made you. Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 5. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. You must understand that what God knew concerning you and ordained you to be, you can never be better than. Oh, I wish you heard me. This is me arriving at today. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. It means you don't know you. You have to be introduced to you. Who am I? It's a question you don't have the right to answer. You cannot answer it by observation because observation will always be wrong. In fact, I discovered that because God glories in lifting from the dunghill, if you make the mistake to define yourself from the dunghill, you will take a percentage deviation that will take you far from your destiny. I said to certain people recently, God made sure that when it was time to give birth to Jesus, Caesar Augustus put a decree that sent them back to the village. And when they got to the village, there was no hotel, no inn, no space. They gave that to him in a manger and he dwelt his early life around Bethlehem, Ephrata. Because you can tell that two years later, by the time Herod was sending to destroy little children, his parents had relocated. They did not do a census and go back. So God made sure Jesus was born in the village. So that being born in the village does not become an excuse to cap your destiny. That means that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Your privilege is not what is defining you now. Let me say this to especially those of you who were born in and around privilege. You are not who you are today because of the privilege that gave birth to you. The privilege that gave birth to you, listen to this, was the environment God wanted to make out of you what he needs you to be. And so among the apostles, he didn't only take fishermen. He also took prominent people like Paul. He took prominent people, prominent people like Cornelius. He took prominent people like Chusa. That means that your calling is not special because you were poor or you were rich. The Bible says the rich and the poor, they had this in common. God is the maker of them both. That means that the God who wrote the story of the rich, wrote the story of the poor. Listen, it didn't mean that God who wrote the story of the poor, wrote, sentenced him to poverty. It meant that the glory of God in the poor is to reveal how God can take a poor man and make out of him what will marvel nations. And yet it is still in the glory of the same God to take a man who is born in wealth and affluence and make him out of him. Why does God take a man who is born in affluence and makes out of him his vessel? Because wealth and affluence are not the answer to life's questions. Everyone who has tasted wealth knows it. They're not the answer to life's questions. So the first question to deal with is, who am I? And if you deal with the question of who am I, and you permit God to introduce you to you, you can be from the, you can be the least, in the least family, from the least clan, from the least village, of the least tribe, and when God shows up, the first thing he says, is thou mighty man of valor. The second question you must ask and answer. Is why am I here? Please listen to me. I'm doing this just, I'm taking this as quickly as I can. Just so that we can honor the time and so that you can find some time to pray in this service. Because I need you to pray in this service. The Bible says it's like a man who beholding his natural face in a glass, turns away and immediately forgets. So many times it's important that we lead you to pray certain prayers while you are seated in the service so that you don't turn away and immediately forget. The second question is to answer the question, why am I here? And hear this. That's not a question of responsibility. No. 
The question why am I here is the question of the exaltation of the orchestrations that has brought you to where you stand. Listen to this. Every man who takes the time to look back at his journey, listen to this. Even if you have not given your life to Christ and you are listening to me here now, if you are human, because the Bible said concerning Jesus that he is the light that lightens every man that comes into the world. That means that every living human being has a portion of light inside of him that is Christ. It is on the strength of that light that the Holy Spirit is released to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That means that the power of conviction, the strength of conviction is sitting in every unbelieving man. Let me tell you how powerful humanity is. And if the man, by will, gives attention to the strength of conviction within him, he will surely arrive at Jesus. That's how Cornelius was saved. Let me tell you a few things that will shock you. Did you realize that Balaam was called a prophet of God, but he did not belong to Israel? That means there were other things God was doing with other people outside of Israel. I wish somebody heard. That means that in humanity, listen to me very carefully so that you don't misquote me. Because Jesus is the way, he's the truth and the life. No man will ever arrive at the Father except by him. But hear this. In the humanity of being human, if a man by his will decides to give attention to the convincing power of the Holy Spirit, who by the way is escorting every unbeliever and pricking them. If you know it, you will know that you are not the harvester of souls. You just go there to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and give that man a confirmation of what the Holy Spirit has been talking him. That's how he arrives at giving his life to Jesus. Every living man who turns back can see a hand beyond himself orchestrating certain circumstances. I will give you one that almost everyone, every married person can relate to. How many of you woke up one morning, past Jude? I guess you woke up one morning and you stretched yourself and you said to yourself, this is the day I'm going to meet her. No, no. Maybe the first day you met, you met Dr. Fajiro, you woke up. Kai, this is the day I'm going to meet her. What were the odds that you were five minutes late and you sat next to her in the bus? What were the odds that you came to church to worship God and when they said, turn around and say hello to your neighbor, you saw a smile, you knew this smile cannot live my life. In every one of our lives are the orchestration of events that we can refer to and know that there's a hand that has been pushing us to where we are at. This, let me refer to what my wife said. So why will Rahab still in business be consistently meditating on the things that are happening to a nation that she knew was coming to take over her land? And she changed citizenship. She did not change behavior. Oh, we are trying to get people to change behavior. What they need is to change citizenship. Because the ability to change behavior is in your new country. So the girl got into a new country. She didn't continue her business. She married a man. God saw her heart as attractive while she was still in business. So what my wife was saying to you earlier is that the spies did not stumble into the tent. What were the chances that when they knew that the king of Jericho was looking for them, how did they know that if we knock the door of this prostitute's house, we will find a refuge? 
It meant that the faith of Rahab became a magnetic force. As he said, if you are members of the country that I see, you cannot rest in any other place. Your resting place is with me. If you don't ask the question, why am I here? What will either happen is that you will be too proud to submit your life to God or you will be too broken inside to accept that the God who led you here had a plan for you. The next question you must ask and answer here is what can I do? This is very important for me. My life revolves around you. My life revolves around you, God. My life revolves around you. My life revolves around you, God. My life revolves around you. My life revolves around you, God. On the Balatai Ebrahasa, is on the Gebeliatasa. My life revolves around you. My life revolves around you, God. Listen to this carefully. It is at this question, what can I do, that your worship begins. And at whatever state of life you are at, that question, what can I do, improves your worship. Because this is what what can I do does. Everyone who says, what can I do, I said, must have acknowledged that there's a hand that brought me here that is beyond me. So now that the hand has helped me to realize there's a hand. Please come, Joseph. Come with your mic, come with your mic. That song is still in my spirit. Go, 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 go. You're the axle and the wheel. You're the porter and the clay. You're the rock I'm standing on. Oh God. Look at this. So there is a hand that had been propelling you. You felt you were achieving things. But there was a hand that was pushing you. The day you realize that there is a hand pushing you, the hand stops pushing you. The day you realize it, the hand stops pushing you. The hand now waits for you to consciously stretch out your hand and be taken. Listen, this is a working of the divinity and the sovereignty of God. This is a product of your will and your surrender. At the point it becomes a product of your will and surrender, it becomes worship. Because God does not take what from you, you give it to him. You're the axle and the wheel. You're the porter and the clay. You're the rock I'm standing on. Oh God. You're the axle and the wheel. You're the porter and the clay. You're the rock I'm standing on. Oh God. Say you realize 
that there was a hand stronger than you that blessed you while you were unfaithful. There was a hand stronger than you that was prospering you even when you were against him. There was a hand stronger than you that kept leading you and strengthening you and pushing you. The moment you acknowledge that hand, the hand stops pushing you. At this point, you must say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, take my hand and lead me. Because it is not worship if it is not consciously given. It's at this point that God said to Cain, Can you pray in the Holy Ghost for like 30 seconds? See, if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, there is an unction in this house there is right now there are mantles of God that are hanging over this house now and somebody is standing at that transition point somebody somebody is standing at that transition point somebody is at that point even if it is not you generate power in the atmosphere that helps them stretch their hands. Let God lead. Rataka balo de dia basaka da basata. Te gamba tua lati haya. Ratia baso seke balianda gabadaya. Ilande carosa hande saya. Ita pakondi grahana. Raba so hondi gainata. Le baso bege le bege dia bagana. Raba so seke banase gaya. Now I decree, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ propel and empower you into that transition now. Listen to me. And look at this. When a man feels the hand, at this point, Jesus said to Peter in John 21, he said, when you were a child, you got up, you dressed the way you wanted, and you went where you wanted to go. He said, but when you become a man, you will stretch forth your hands. See, as I said that, I believe that somebody needed to do that action by faith. He said, you will stretch forth your hands. Another will take you by the hand. And lead you where you are not necessarily wanting to go. Somebody need to say to God, Lord, take me by the hand. Take me by the hand. Please do it. Do it. Take me and lead me to the place where I find rest. Take me and lead me to the place where mercy dwells. Take me and lead me to the place where eagles soar. There's a place where lions feast is the place where I'm with you. Take me and lead me to the place where I find rest. Take me and lead me to the place where mercy dwells. Take me and lead me to the place where eagles soar, a place where lions feast. Don't stop praying. A place where I'm with you. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Things are happening here in the spirit. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Oh, should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep, the shepherd of my soul will be my God. 
Lord, you're the shepherd of my soul. I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made the choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. One more time. Lord, you're the shepherd of my soul. And I give you full control Wherever you may lead I will find I have made the choice I have made a choice To listen for your voice Wherever you may lead I will go Wherever you may lead, wherever you may lead, I will go. Wherever you may lead, may lead, I will go. Look at this sense. Look at this sense. And you need to understand it. It is at this point when God is transitioning. That he starts to say to you, Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he becomes Lord. And many times when you arrive here. Your life that you thought was going straight. When he's doing it, you must be saying, He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Where'er I be, whate'er I see. Still tis God's hands that he hath me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hands he leadeth me. His faithful follower I will be. For by his hands he at that point, the highest treasure of your life will become his voice. John chapter 10. My sheep, they know my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. I spent a lot of time here. But listen, there are two dimensions of the knowing of the voice of God. It is the knowing of his principle in the word and the knowing of his leading by the spirit. I, I wish I could break it down. The knowing of his principle by the word and the knowing of his leading by his spirit. Listen, I find that there's a spooky generation rising that wants to know his leading by his spirit by an utterance without knowing his principle by the word. And even Jesus cannot escape Satan if all he knows is the voice of God. Because what he used to say Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. It's not the distinction of the voice. The voice of Satan that day sounded like the voice of the Holy Spirit. Satan has been around the throne too long. He knows what your sensation is looking for. That's why some of you are offended with God. You felt like it was God who led you, but it failed. I just delivered somebody right now. You are offended with God because you heard a voice. But the outcome did not look like the voice you heard. Sometimes it seems of deepest gloom. Sometimes where Eden's flowers bloom. Content whatever Lord I see since this is hands that be there. 
Please listen to me. These are destiny questions. And the moment you make the leadership of his spirit, when you make it premium in your life, what happens naturally is that your outcomes begin to change. At that point, let me tell you, if you answer this question as a rich person, you will suddenly realize how not rich you are on one of the two bases. On the strength of how much God needs your wealth to do, you will suddenly realize that what you have now cannot do it. I, I have pressed into the last question, but you will, you will soon see it. Or else you will wake up and realize that even if you had enough to do what God was asking you to do, your sense of value was so wrong, you could have never arrived there except that somebody took you by the hand and led you there. Listen, let me say this in simple English. If at all you understood what I just said, you will not play with your Bible study. You won't play with it. And it won't just be one morning routine of let me read a few scriptures so that I can be a Christian. No, it is, Lord, let me understand you. I want to understand, I need to know how you think. So that if me and you are going to journey this journey, one devil will not come and lead me into something that looks like it is you, then I only find out much later that it was never you. Because the mastery of his voice, according to John chapter 10, is that the voice of a stranger you will not follow. Now you understand why we say, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Yes, the sheep of his hand. It is my sheep that know my voice. If we don't take cognizance of the fact that we are sheep in his flock, then we will not strive to master the voice of our shepherd. I grown in the north, born in Kano, schooled in Joss, now live in Joss, went to the university in Zaria. I understand the nomadic ways. Every shepherd has a special name and a special code for each cow. That's why they can burn down an entire village for killing one car. Apart from the agenda, there's the sentiment. Like how you go to England and somebody's crying, you ask him what happened, you say, my dog died. Something we eat. I'm from Plateau State, just in case you didn't understand. Is anybody following me? I need us to finish this right now. When I ask the question, when I realize that there's a hand leading me, then I have answered the question, what can I do? Because what can I do is whatever he leads me to do. Partner with that movement of God. Let me say this to you. The blessing of God is not with spiritual things, it's with obedience. I won't say beyond that. It will damage the faith of the weak. The blessing of God are not with spiritual things. The blessing of God is in obedience. Sacrifices and burnt offerings have I not desired. The prophet Samuel said to Saul, has the Lord desired the burning of fat and, and the fat of offerings more than he has desired obedience? He said, for to obey is better than to sacrifice and to hearken better than the fat of rams. Please hear this as I close. The final question is where am I going? Thank you, Joseph. The final question is where am I going? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, seeing therefore that we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every scene and every way that not easily beset us and let us run with patience 
the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross and despised its shame. Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present times are not worthy to be compared with the glories that shall be revealed. Listen to this. The stability to journey with God and the clarity of your focus in that journey comes from answering the question, where am I going? We did a bit of this on Friday. I'll finish with this today. When you build a relationship with God, you realize that it becomes important for you to say to God, Lord, give me a glimpse of where you are taking me to. First, so that every doubt and discontent in my heart will die. Listen to this. This is deeply spiritual, and I, I trust the Lord that you bring your understanding to it. It is at that point that if your destiny reduces your natural wealth or reduces your natural importance, you will still embrace your destiny, knowing that the measure of glory in the spirit is not... Listen, the things we glory in in the natural, the spirit considers it responsibility. It is in the natural that you are as important as what you have and what position you hold. And so we literally kill ourselves trying to get because we need that level of importance. Sometimes I wonder why a person would spend months campaigning to be president or governor in this nation if you actually know what is waiting in the office. When they enter, if their hair was black, it turns gray in hours. Because the intensity of thought and the gods that you are competing with, let me tell you, every seat of authority is the contention of gods, including Jehovah. Every existing God is targeting to witness it. Because gods are only permitted in the earth realm by men. Satan and Jehovah are only as legal as men grant them permission in this realm. Because the earth he has given to the sons of men. So Nigeria is not where it is because of God. You, you God forgive me. Those of you who know, know that I have a strong priestly calling for this nation. I cannot avoid it. I have tried I'll be angry with God. I've told him I've resigned. I only woke up the next day and found out that I was still in duty. I suddenly understand, I, I suddenly understand where Paul was when he said, you know what? I have realized that if I said I will not preach, there is a dispensation committed to me and woe is me if I don't preach. That means if I preach willingly, I preach for the sake of a reward. He said, but even if I'm unwilling, I'll find myself preaching because there's a dispensation. I'm compelled and woe is me. When I speak about Nigeria, that's how I feel. Nigeria is where it is because you have not taken dominion. I told you on Friday night, the world is better with me in charge. That means not Chintok, it's what you are supposed to be telling yourself. And don't say it until you know the ways of God. So you don't disgrace God. Let me give you a bit of the ways of God. Because I know that this house produces leaders. As surely as the house God has committed to me produces leaders. And I'm talking political leaders. A man who knows God can never and should never give the excuse of the availability of resources for the state of what is governing. Because part of the workings of faith is your ability to access the supernatural and find the wisdom that produces productivity in the midst of the drought. If not, you never met God. That's why there are certain faith exercises you must begin to engage yourself in now. Your heart
heart must believe in the God who makes a way in the wilderness and produces rivers in the desert. So that if they say to you, the global economy is coming down, you'll be able to hide yourself in a room. Lord, you said by covenant. When they say, there's a casting down. That's when I arise and say, there's a lifting up. That declaration is not only supposed to be personal. Everything that is in your care should come alive in a season of drought. So that there will be witness that the God who rules in Egypt is ruling Goshen differently. That's why stories are written in scripture. So listen. An unbelieving state governor can get up and say, the federal government is in a cash crunch. They have cut down our allocation. So we have to manage. A believing governor is not permitted to say it. This is where faith comes alive. That means like Daniel, every believing governor should have a quorum I wish you heard me. Every believing governor, believing president, believing commissioner, believing special assistant, believing, even if you are assistant to the special assistant, as long as you are believing, you should have a quorum, even if it's three of you, where you enter a room. See, I qualify to preach this year because I know Apostle Tony Rappo. I know how much prayer I was privileged to host him once. Before he went up, he told us to give him a clear room. He entered there with a team. Four hours now. If you see us do that, we are not mad. There's a frequency we are intercepting. When we come down from there, we will tell you what people do not know and how it makes a way. But you see, you have to be convinced that it works. For you to walk it. So God lifts you up and gives you a position. You will, your confession will be, the Bible says never call a confederacy what they call a confederacy and don't fear what they fear. It is at that point that your confession becomes different. Start it now with your family. That's very exciting. Pastor Jude told me about the Be Your Brother's Keeper movement. Please let me say something. Blessed are those of you who have given to that project. And blessed are those of you who have received from that project. But as you receive it, declare the name of the Lord Jesus. The next be your brother's keeper, I'll be the one keeping others. I thought I had believers in church. Listen, nobody should accuse you of not having faith because you have a need. But you should compel yourself from deep within. And declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. A picture of where you are going is the stability for your journey. If that does not happen, every wind of Satan will cause you to stumble and shake and all of that. Oh, I perceive the Holy Spirit will have me do one more thing. And I have closed. Listen to these saints. I hear the Spirit of God say that some of you invest hours in prayer, but you pray amiss. So even prayer has accuracy. Please hear me. At the ultimate climax of prayer is governmental prayer. At the ultimate climax of prayer is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How you know you have arrived at prayer is that all of your personal needs are suspended so that you embrace the need of God and decide that the earth will not go on without that need finding expression and better so by me. Oh Lord, as surely as you prosper me, there will be no poor man left on the street. You can't, when you pray that, you might be seeing yourself feeding the poor. But when you advance in God, you realize that that prayer was not prayed so that you feed the poor. Actually, what you'll be doing is you'll be servicing poverty. At that point, wisdom now tells you how to gather what is and give life out of it. Listen to this. I'll share this small testimony. 
I don't know if I said it on Friday. Got a brother in church who is a political appointee. And he came to me and he said, the Lord is laying my heart to pay the jam fees of all of the SS3 students in my constituency. Listen to me, please. Saints, it doesn't take too much to change the lives of people. It just takes a divine idea and a blessed spiritual house like this that can run the idea. So he came to me and he said, that's what I want to do. Then I said to him, oh, great, but that's not all you will do. I said, because the educational system is already too bad. You will pay exam registration for people who will fail exam. So what we will do as your church is we will create a boot camp. Bring all the children you registered for. We will teach them how to write. As I speak to you, this morning in our church in Joss, all of those children, 160 of them, are in service today because today was the last day of their boot camp. They came from a village. They, some of them have never seen a computer before. Jammed in CBT. So we have to give them basic training in the use of computers and give them basic understanding of the four subjects they are going to have to write to pass. And all the teachers who taught them, about 16 of them, are members of church. Every week, they are going to keep in touch with their students in that village and send them new assignments from now till jam. And I said to him, if 90% of those students were going to fail, let us reduce that percentage to at least 50. Then the rest of the 50, who don't seem to have what it takes to apprehend academically, let us find what part of life we can set them in. I'm saying this to say to you that every opportunity and mountain top God gives you, it doesn't take too much. Let me shock you at the level of just. It didn't cost us 10 million to run it. Some of you can give 10 million your sleep. In Joss, it didn't cost us 10 million to run it. I said that so that you can stand here and say, God, where am I going? What are you doing with me? And you also belong to a blessed house. Thank God for the accessibility of your leadership and pastors. That's part of the reasons why God sets the lowly, the lonely in families. Don't run alone. There are certain things you will say that the wisdom of God that these people carry as spiritual leaders will illuminate it and expand it. When they were doing the inaugural five days ago, my wife was there to represent me because I was out in the United Kingdom. Many of the other commissioners who showed up suddenly picked it up as an idea. So imagine if every commissioner from every state. Let's lift it up to Lagos standard with a 25, 30 million. All that money you are using to do political studies. With a 25, 30 million, you change the life of 200 children and do it consistently for five years. It doesn't bite you. It only means that, the, listen, wisdom cries out on the streets. He tells you that wisdom is not easily reachable. Wisdom is a man. His name is Jesus. When he comes to you, the little you have, he will expand it and bless the nations by it. There are simple dominion things you can do now. You remember we said, the last question is what can I do? Then the clarity and stability of your journey. Where am I going? Just lift up your hands where you are. Let's close this right here. Can you pray what you heard back to God? Pray what you heard back to God. Pray what you heard back to God. And while you pray, let the hand of the Lord rest upon you. 
This girl said, the hand of the Lord came upon me. And he lifted me by the locks of my hair. God can lift you by the locks of your hair. He can drench you in the anointing. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. He said the labor of the fool wearies every one of them because they do not know the way to the city. Say to the Lord, I'm not a fool. You are my God. You are my shepherd. I'm the sheep of your pasture. You will show me what I must do. Make my life profitable. Make my life count. Add one more prayer to it. I want to know you. I want to know you the way you are. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace. So I can leave your days. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace. So I can leave your days. I want to see you. I want to see you. Pray just for a little longer. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace. So I can leave your days. I want to see you. I want to see you one more time. I want to see your face. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace. So I can leave your days. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Say I want to see you. I want to know your ways. Touch your grace. Touch your grace. So I can live your days. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Lord, today, in the spirit of dominion, Oh. oh, listen, this is what happened in this service. He has broken the gates of brass and he has cut the bars of iron asunder. They are limiting thoughts that have kept you bound within only what you know. Today, by the hand of the Lord, I break before you that gate of brass. I cut down that wall of iron. I decree that what has limited men will never limit you. From where you are, the Lord amplifies and magnifies the things that you hold in your hand. And the Lord, by the spirit of wisdom, shows you what you must do. Oh, somebody by one instruction, you are entering into that which they told you no one can come into. Somebody by one revelation, you are breaking through into spheres that men have only thought about. And I decree now in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. Give me a two minutes. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron. One more time, one more time. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron. This is your song from here. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my 
Lord, wash on in the land of the living. The Lord receive wisdom. Say the Lord is my portion. The Lord forevermore. Say the Lord is my portion. I want to pray a verse of scripture over you. This is what the scripture says. I believe this will be Psalm 125 verse 3. The Bible says, Oh, from verse 1, they that put their trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They cannot be moved but abide forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so that the Lord surround his people both now and forever. Then he said, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lots of the righteous, so that the righteous will not put his hand into iniquity. Today I decree by the hand of God, that your portion is secured. Your lot is preserved. You will not have a reason henceforth to think about iniquity and exalt the ways of darkness. In the name of Jesus. And I decree over you that that which the Lord has given you, the Lord himself will keep. And that which is kept by the Lord, you will not live in fear of losing. Oh, I free your heart space. I bring your heart space from fear to liberty. From fear to liberty. From fear to liberty. That you might gladly serve the living God. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for this present house. Thank you because a season of dominion is infallibly, undeniably, standing right before us lord let a door be opened right now by the hand that opens a door and no man can shut let a door open before them right now in the name of jesus and let the wisdom of god and the power of god amplify that little in your hand and change nations by it to the praise and the glory of his great grace in Jesus' name and all God's people, shout amen.